the gravity of the time is such that every new avenue of peace, no matter how dimly discernible, should be explored. Never before in history has so much hope for so many people been gathered together in a single organization. You will provide a great share of the wisdom, of the courage, and the faith which can bring to this world lasting peace for all nations and happiness and well-being for all men. So we are here today with Sandra de Groot, who is the CTO and co-founder of Thorizon. Sandra, welcome to Titans of Nuclear. Thank you. So Sander, how did you originally get into the nuclear industry? Yeah, so I graduated as a mechanical engineer and after a short while in an engineering company, I moved to Energy. And Energy is a nuclear research organization mm -hmm. and medical isotope producer in the Netherlands, mm -hmm. operator of the high flux reactor in mm -hmm. Petra. Uh, I've been working there since 2000 for over 22 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the last few years at, at Energy, uh, I initiated the molten salt reactor program at Energy. Uh, molten salt reactors, became very popular in, in, in that period. Of course, these reactors have been operated in, in, in the 50s and after that basically stopped any development on the, in this field. But I thought the technology was hugely interesting. So mm -hmm. I decided let's initiate a program at NRG. Within that program, uh, an idea emerged uh, for a molten salt reactor to design and build it in a certain way. And uh, within NRG, there was not really possibility to develop this further. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the agreement of NRG, we started Thorizon basically mm -hmm. and picked up that concept, developed it further in my own time, at my own risk, with mm -hmm. a number of people that uh, were interested in this. Mm -hmm. uh, we submitted a patent, uh, got in contact with nuclear industry parties, mm -hmm. uh, for example, Aranho, which is a major partner, partner for us. And uh, then we got in contact with investors mm -hmm. and we closed the financing round last year's summer. And since then, uh, yeah, full-time working for Horizon. Very exciting. We will dive into all of that in just a moment. But I want to uh, talk a little bit more about NRG and the work you did there. So uh, just for our, our audience who may be less familiar with NRG, the Dutch NRG, because there is another NRG yes. which is completely separate. Uh, they operate the Palace Reactor, which is the high temperature flux reactor um, in the Netherlands. They also provide other um, support for organizations in terms of things like licensing. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, and you were, did you work at all on the Palace Reactor or were you just very speci specifically focused on the Molten Salt Program? No, I was, I was, when I started to work, I was working in this consultancy department mm -hmm. of energy. Okay. So I was in the computational engineering field, Got structural it. mechanic analysis, mm -hmm. fraction mechanics, safety analysis, mm -hmm. and also designed facilities that were put in the high flux reactor in, in, oh, in okay. And after that, uh, I moved to more project management of irradiations. So fuel and material uh, mm -hmm. irradiations in the high flux reactor. Mm -hmm. um, and I was a lot involved in high temperature reactors yes. basically at that time. And after that, um, moved more into the business development side. And from that position, I initiated the multi salt reactor program. Got it. And so you guys are doing a lot of the um, medical isotopes. Is that the yes. correct? And yes. Are they primarily for the Netherlands? Are you guys uh, producing them broadly across Europe? I know in the United States, Canada produces quite a bit, a few of our uh, medical isotopes. But so are you guys sort of doing that same support in Europe? Yes. So, well, energy is basically providing 30 uh, percent oh, wow. of the world demand in wow. medical isotopes. So it's a lot. That's yeah. Wow, that's yeah. really interesting because I know that um, you know the Netherlands has obviously you know a, a fabulous uh, nuclear regulator and, and nuclear history, um, but they only have one commercial operating reactor right now. We yeah. just had uh, Carlo Walters on the podcast ah, okay. yes. uh, recently. I think he was last week's episode. Yeah. Um, so that was that was really wonderful. Carlos from EPZ for anyone who is yeah. not familiar, uh, which is the the nuclear utility in the Netherlands. Um, and then is the Palace Reactor the only other research facility, or are there other research reactors in the country as well? well 
Paulus is basically a reactor that is currently being constructed. Oh, so okay. it's a replacement of the high flux reactor, Got which it. is the existing material Got test it. reactor and medical isotope production facility. So uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a replacement. Mm -hmm. That's that's what uh, Paulus is. But that's the only other uh, research reactor in in the Netherlands. Or do you There's have also a smaller uh, university uh, okay. research reactor at the at the Delft University. Got it. Okay, interesting, interesting. Well, hopefully we see more more commercially operating reactors come online soon in the Netherlands. Yeah, of course, Carlo has. A lot yeah. of ambitions, yes. and uh, that's that's wholeheartedly supported. Yes, absolutely. I think we need it. Yes, yeah. yeah so, so back to uh, Thorizon and, and the work you're doing there. So, um, it's a molten salt reactor, right? Yeah. And about how how big is it? Well, the size that we are currently focusing on is 250 mm -hmm. megawatt thermal. And with that, we can produce 250 megawatt of steam, mm -hmm. which can be then converted into electricity, okay. about 100 megawatt electric. Okay, so about 100 megawatts. How, how large of a, a plot size are you, are you targeting? Well, we are currently looking at that. Uh, generally, the, the, the core is really compact, so yeah. it's not, not that big. Not uh, so mm -hmm. let's say that the nuclear island well, should be 30 to 30 meters type of, uh, of square. But then, of course, the Turbine Island right, and anything right, connected to it, but what we're looking at is that the, the core is this is this is reactor, of course, mm -hmm. and then you can connect to many types of different processes that are connected to it. We're, for example, also investigating that the energy that is produced is stored mm -hmm. in salt. Oh, right. So yes. our primary system is salt. The secondary system is salt. We can connect to a tertiary cycle of salt mm -hmm. where we can store energy, and then in that in that sense, so with all the renewable energies coming up, we can compensate. Right. And make use of uh, of the flow and demand and, and supply. And so, are you uh, are you guys just designing the reactor system, and then would you partner with um, a company like a like a Malta or something who who are doing those storage systems, or are you guys also looking to develop uh, those other uh, the additional systems as well? No, I mean we're a startup company, yeah. so to be able to build a reactor like that, you need thousands of people, and we want right. to do it quickly. Yeah. So you cannot do that by just you know <laughs> growing as a startup company. At mm -hmm. least uh, we think that is unreasonable. So what we're trying to do is to team up with partners that have the expertise and the people to grow really quick. Yeah. So typically for something like this, which is outside of the nuclear island, we would team up with somebody else. Mm -hmm. And also within the nuclear island, we are looking for partnerships uh, within nuclear industry to, to speed up our pro progress and, and accelerate as much as we can. Absolutely. So have, have you built any of those partnerships that you can publicly announce yet? Well, one of the partnerships that we're working on is with Orano. Mm -hmm. And that's a very important one because we're looking at the reactor and Orano is particularly interested in, in molten salt fuel production mm -hmm. and also taking molten salt fuel back mm -hmm. after use and make and incorporate that into their reprocessing mm -hmm. facilities. So uh, that is really important because it takes away our concerns in producing the fuel mm -hmm. and we can focus on our reactor design. So that is a, a very important uh, partnership. Yeah. And so are you targeting initial deployment in the Netherlands? Are you looking at a lot of different markets? What are Where are you looking to build your first facility? Well, we're looking at everything and then we move with the wave. So mm -hmm. where is the largest interest? So we're we talking to Carlo as well. Yeah. Because that, they have a very large site with the nuclear uh -huh. destination. And uh, we're also discussing with them. Is, is, is your site not interesting for a system like ours? Mm -hmm. And they are interested. But of course, uh, we're not in any committing stage uh, at the moment. But for them, with the ambitions to build light water reactors, they also have a concern about how to manage the fuel cycle, mm -hmm. how to manage the waste streams that come from it. And our reactor is particularly suited to be able to take the long-lived elements out of spent fuel and you know, using it as a fuel. And in the meantime, reducing all the long-lived waste streams that could come from, from light water reactor operation. Absolutely. Um, well, that's very exciting. And so what types of customers are you? I mean, you mentioned um, storage as an option, but are you guys looking to deploy uh, at a grid scale? Or are you guys thinking um, that you'll uh, have industrial industrial behind the meter customers? What are you looking at um, for your early deployment? Yeah, basically, what we try to do is to have that reactor operating as long as possible, just you know, keep, keep the economy high. So one of the customers that could be interesting is an industrial end user mm -hmm. that basically needs a 24-7 supply of heat. Mm -hmm. That's one of the customer directions that we're looking into. Mm -hmm. And it's the easiest one because heat is what we produce in any case. If we produce electricity, that can also be used for a certain site, especially if industry starts to electrify uh, hydrogen production, for example, then you know we could also support that 24-7.
um, if we come to more like um, uh, the, the grid, grid stability or uh, customers that have uh, fluctuating demand in combination with the fluctu fluctuating supply from renewables, then you come into this idea of keeping the reactor operating continuously, but store the heat and use it when the demand is there. So we're looking at all these options basically, but the core of the system doesn't change because of that. We're stuck to the 250 megawatt thermal. It's based on our technology. This is what we think we can maximally achieve in a reasonable way. And uh, we stick to that. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, the Netherlands is interesting um, geographically because uh, you have some neighbors that are not big fans of nuclear, right? Especially, you know, Germany being the, <laughs> the biggest one, but Belgium as well. Um, you know, I guess what challenges does that pose, but also what opportunities are there to provide energy uh, generated in the Netherlands to countries that do not have clean baseload power? Well, um, yeah, at the moment, politically, it's, it's of course a complication. Right. Uh, like, like Germany is really anti-nuclear and mm -hmm. uh, sticking on that route. Mm -hmm. So they have influence on European frameworks on, right. on, on how to implement. So it's, it's, it's not something that we are actively trying to, to change. We, we can't. And it doesn't help the European framework for nuclear. Mm -hmm. So we connect to France, mm -hmm. uh, we connect to Orano, mm -hmm. and uh, we have also set up an office in, in uh, Lyon to, to strengthen this uh, relation and make sure that we, we make, uh, make the most out of what is present in the Netherlands and in France to accelerate our development. Yeah. But we're basically not having any ambitions to start talking uh, in, in Germany and try to convince them that this is really a good idea. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and how many team members do you guys have at this point? Sure. How, how, lar how large is your team? Uh, we're now with 20 people in uh, Amsterdam and uh, we have hired five people in Lyon. Yeah. And uh, we are continuously to hire. We aim for having uh, also a 20 person team in Lyon and, uh, yeah, and, and, and grow from there. So every opportunity we can get to accelerate our, our program and our development, we try to pick up. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, you know, I, we like to finish these off by looking at the future. So I want to give you the opportunity to uh, talk about what you see as the future of nuclear and, um, and where you see uh, nuclear energy playing a role in, in, in the global energy mix going forward. Well, I think the challenges of this energy, energy transition is so enormous that without nuclear energy, this will not uh, work. And we also need to be quick about it. That also means that a development like what we are doing will take too long. So we need to establish light water reactors which are off the shelf, build them please, everywhere you can, we need it. Uh, and for many reasons, uh, it's, it's climate, it's independence, uh, it's, it's emissions, uh, it's you know, just something that you should do. Complementary to that, and this is also how we basically position ourselves, we also need to take the responsibility in the nuclear sector to look at the waste streams, to look at how do you use your resources effectively. And I think molten salt is the ultimate technology that can make the most out of nuclear materials, both in reduction of waste, long-lived waste, and in getting the most energy of this of these resources that we have. So I see this complementary role. And with molten salt reactor technology, there are many ways you can develop this technology. You can look at moderated system, you can look at fast spectrum systems, and it's all bases, it's based on molten salt. So uh, once we have those systems operational, I think there's a very large future for this. Yeah. But as I said, in complement to light water reactors. Absolutely. Well, Sandra de Groot, thank you very much for joining us on Titans of Nuclear. Thank you. And initiate at least a new approach to the many difficult problems that must be solved in both private and public conversations. If the world is to take off the inertia imposed by fear and is to make positive progress toward peace.